All right then gang, so in the last video we learned something pretty important in React. Whenever we change the state of a component, that component is going to re-render the template to the DOM to reflect that change over here. So if I just click on highlight updates, that's going to highlight over on the left whenever we update something. We can see over here if I say 35, we'll see this flash on the left and it changes, it updates the template, it re-renders it to the DOM to see that change. So that's an important concept in React. Whenever we change the state of a component, it's going to re-render to output that new state to the DOM, okay? Now, not every user or very, very, very few users to your website, in fact, are going to use React DevTools to change your state. In all likelihood, they'll do something like click a button or type into a text field, or in the case of less savvy internet users, maybe just double click everything. Right, so what we want to do is figure out a way to react to those events on a page. And then later on, what we can do is based on those events, change the state. But for now, we'll just concentrate on listening to those click events or mouse move events or other things on a page and then reacting to them. OK, so we'll do a few examples. The first one I want to do is just a simple click event. So we'll create a button, first of all. So button and button. And then inside, we'll just say, click me. All right, so we want to listen for when a user clicks this button. Now, the way we attach an event handler to this is very simply. We say on, and then whatever the event is called, and this is camel case, so on click in this case. And there's loads of different types of events. I'm going to leave a link to all the events down below that you can check out. And we're going to set this equal to something. Now, what do we want to set this equal to? Well, some kind of function. We want to call a function here. Now, remember, we can't just write the function in quotes like that or just here like a call func like that because we're outputting JavaScript now. And when we want to output any kind of dynamic JavaScript, we have to enclose it in those curly braces, much like we did up here. So we're saying, okay, on click, run whatever's inside these curly braces. And from here, we can call a function. Now, we don't have that function defined yet, so let's define it first of all. I'm going to go up here under state, and in classes, we can just define functions, much like we've defined this render function right here. I'm going to define a function called handle click. And this is the function I want to execute when someone clicks on this button. You don't have to call it this, by the way. You can call it whatever you want. So this function is going to take the event object E. It takes that by default. OK, we don't have to pass it in down here. It just takes it whenever there's an event on a page. So inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, for now, all I want to do is console.log the event. And then we have a property on the event called target, which gets us the target element, i.e. what did the user click to cause the event? Or where did the event fire from originally, which is this button. OK, so we have our event defined now. All we need to do is call it from this button. So to call it, we don't just say handle click. We have to say this dot handle click because this refers to the component which the function is stored on. So we say this dot handle click, much like we said this dot state dot name is this dot handle click. Now, we don't invoke it using parentheses because that's going to invoke the function straight away when the page loads, when it runs this code. We don't want to do that. We want only this to fire when a user clicks on this button. So if we just pass it a reference to the function like this, instead of automatically invoking it, then what's going to happen is when a user clicks on the button, it's going to find this function and then fire it. OK. All right. So let's save that and preview this in a browser. And we'll go to the console so we can see something logged over here. And we'll say click me, click on that, and we can see the button logged to the console. So this is the target, e.target, right? All right, then. So that's a click event. Pretty simple, right? I'll show you now a different event, um, a mouse over event, maybe. So we'll do another button. And inside that button, we'll say hover me very original <laughs> okay and then we want to attach another event so it's on then the event name this event is mouse over camel case like this and then we set that equal to some kind of function so we'll define that first of all up here 
we'll say handle mouse over passing the event object then down here what I'm going to do is console.log first of all just the event so let's reference that here this dot handle mouse over so now when we hover over this button this should fire so if we save this and hover over this you can see every time we go into it it fires for hovering over it on mouse over okay so this is the whole event object and we can see that down here we have all of these different properties on this event so we can see things like the page x or the page y and if we expand those it's null at the minute but we can if we want to say e dot target first of all to tell us the target element and then we'll also say e dot page x and that's going to get us the mouse position on the x coordinate of the page of that event so let us now hover over and we can see that it was the button hover me and 136 pixels to the right from the left of the screen if we go further to the left it's going to be less it's 80 pixels all right so we have all those different things available to us on the event object and we can use it that way and react to events this way all right i want to show you one more event and that's going to be a copy event so we'll do a p tag first of all and inside that p tag i'll say something like what we think we become all right so then we want to attach an event to this and this time it's on copy so when a user tries to copy the text when they highlight it right click and then go to copy then the event is going to fire so first of all let's add on the function that we want to fire so handle copy like so take the event object and then inside oops inside we'll just say console.log try being original for once all right so let's save this now and see if this works all right no it doesn't that's because we've not referenced the function down here so we need to say handle copy save that and check it out in a browser now and it still doesn't work that's because handle copy is not defined and it's this Again, schoolboy errors I'm making here. Don't do this yourself. This dot handle copy. Then we go over here. And now if I try to right click and copy this, then we get this logged to the console. So if someone's trying to steal your work by copying it and then pasting it somewhere else, you can send them a nasty message this way. All right, so I want to show you one more thing. What if we want to access the state of our component inside one of these functions. For example, when I click on that button, the first one, and this fires, what if I want to log something like this to the console, the state of the component? Well, let's try it. First of all, let's comment out that one. And instead, we'll console.log this.state. So if I save this now and go to the browser, and click over here then we get an error it says cannot read property state of undefined so why is that not working because we referenced this dot state down here and even if we say this dot state dot age you know choose a particular property this is still not going to work you see we still get the same error so why is it not working we can access it down here this dot state but not up here in the functions and that's to do with the scope of the this keyword and what it references at different points in your component and we're going to talk about that in the next video